Welcome back to The Gift of the Gab, the first ever talent search that aims to find Ireland's next top pundit. Last week, we sent our pundits out into the elements to test their composure in front of the camera before exploring the depth of their hurling knowledge in an intense Jenna Hurl knowledge quiz. Unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to two of our valiant hurling know-it-alls, Amory from Galway and Sinead from Wexford. Lads, the women are dropping like flies. This week, we'll be putting our contestants in front of some live hurling action. But first, let's meet the judges for today's challenge. He's often referred to as the most passionate man in hurling. He's not saying anything. It's Davy Fitzgerald. And the next judge, it's 18-time All-Ireland winner, Rena Buckley. 18 All-Ireland medals. Where does she keep them all? Guys, congrats to each of you on getting this far in the competition. Myself and Davy and the rest of the gang have been very impressed with you, so well done. It's going to be an interesting evening ahead. The first challenge will involve some live hurling action. First of all, we're going to commentate on a game. Secondly, then, we're going to do some sideline interviews. And thirdly, you're going to do some post-match analysis. This is where you have to utilise all your skills, see what you're about. Right, folks, it's time to meet the team. Sweet mother of God. It's like the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. I knew we shouldn't have loaded them up on the red lemonade before they hit the pitch. First up in the challenge, it's Seamus. Welcome to Cumnay Luca, Scale Lafina Park here. The sun is shining wherever you're watching, whether it's Belfast. Meanwhile, Davy and Rena are watching our pundits in a tech savvy, state of the art reviewing station, which is definitely not just a horse box with a telly in it. And the ball is in, the ball is thrown in, the ball is in the middle. Straight away it's picked up. He has a Peter O'Toole. He was recently a blue belt in karate. He's a bit spiritual. He could change the world with his hands and his mind. Trevor Donegan, who's now playing full back, he's doing a marking job. And Patsy O'Connell, and I wouldn't blame him for that. Patsy scored 2-3 in the semi-final win over Ken McCall Croaks last final week. He's bringing the players into the game more. Like, I understand nearly who's playing there way more than I did the first time. Yeah, yeah. we have number three, Peter O'Toole. And it is hit across. Well done. Like her flow is kind of like when there isn't anything happening, she's not really feeling this, the thing not quicker. Not feeling the space. Yeah. Beautiful stick work. He's under no pressure though. Tactics is gone. And Shane Tobin Logan, a man that's named twice, he's going to have to be marked twice as well if he's named double <laughs> He bends, he picks, he lifts, he has the ball, he's back in and again, he's trying, he comes out of it. This man has a short temper, he's the longest puck in the club, but he's the shortest temper, he's like a surgeon. He's telling us what's happening in the game, but also there's stories happening all over the place, you know? We have to say he's got his homework done. Number five is Shane Logan. Is he related to Johnny Logan? Johnny had won two Eurovision Sing Contest in 1980 and 1989. I might have years. Could he keep up that tempo for 70 minutes? I don't know. <laughs> so he's on a 21. He looks, he strikes. What a goal! A screamer! The goal score! Number six, Trevor Donegan. We have first score inside the first 30 seconds of the game. What a start! The key moments, he's building him up <laughs> big time. They're still grouping again. Ah, there's an off the ball here, off the ball with the referee. I think he's had to leave in his cards at home, folks. He's, he's calling things as this, which I really like. Well, he looks up, he's wearing the blue and green yellow helmet, balling around the house. It's inside, it's gone over the line, it's a goal, the first goal in the game. It came all the way in from the sideline, a super sideline by young Ken Murphy. Very impressive. I wasn't expecting this, you know. He goes at it, the players are looking out, that is a fantastic puck. Can the Bars get it down to the end of the pitch before that whistle goes? I think she knows her stuff, but I just don't think she's bringing it across does, is she? Number nine has it, that's Brendan Gleeson. I tell you, they'll make a film about this fellow when he's finished. He has the ball, did he run it out over the line? He gets the strike in, oh, the pressure's still on. Don't the boys are disappointed, but with the next exhibition going on here like this, the future's bright, what a save! Danny Fatty on the line! Danny's after producing one of the saves of the season there. Can we get a replay on that there, please? Danny threw the body in the line, full stretch. And the crowd behind me are really responding to Danny's effort there. I'd actually listen to this fella. Yeah. 110 percent Referee is looking at his watch. Is it final time? The referee's gonna call it. It's all over. It's ended in a draw. Tune into the Sunday game later on to see all the action. He's nipping tuck, isn't it? Very much so. It's gonna be hard to separate them. Yeah. Over to the sidelines now for some deep insight from the players. I'm here with Danny Fahey, the man who made that brilliant save. Danny, how do you feel after today's game? Good. And the goals that were scored, um, how important were they to the end of the match? They were pretty important. I'd say they were probably one of the most important 
things of the game. What's the hopes for the season? Are you looking to push on and win the All-Ireland? Yes. That goal in the first half, did we feel down downbeat after that goal? Uh, what does that mean? Have you any anyone at all that you currently, you know, you think that's a team that you might struggle to beat? No. I tell you, you're like a politician. It's hard to get something out of you here, Danny. You should be proud of your performance today and continue the fa fantastic game and best of luck in this year's championship going forward. Thanks very much, David. OK. These kids are giving nothing away. We could have done with them during the War of Independence. First off, very, very high standard. Excellent standard. They set the scene. They described the game. They zoomed out and told stories. I think RT would be lucky to have one of them top class stuff. Back to the studio now where our pundits are behaving like four strangers in a lift trying to figure out who farted. I don't know, what did you think, John? Seamus, I, I, I agree with what you're saying there. And for this level, OK, I thought the coaching was outstanding, but I thought it was too crowded having bigger space for these kids to express their skills more. You know, that's one but thing. John, you to. see possession games and training and stuff like that. That's where, where kids have to learn how to pass off the ball and stuff like that. You I agree, Anna. People at I agree. Plus, all about the balance. It was a but lot of contact. They should be just yeah. all but let them. Ah, uh, here. They're worse than the themselves. kids. This it's thing about right. tactics and going out yeah. and skills, they're underage. Let them question. enjoy themselves. I'll ask you a question. No, we had all that. I, I go back to my point here now, thank you. I go back to my point now. From the bigger picture, there was loads of lads making runs. Shane, out, Shane, the back Shane. Of And particularly when young Fahey made a save and he kept his team in it. Well, it's fair to say they're living up to the TV pundit stereotype. Back over to me in the studio. Welcome back, guys. I think it is fair to say that if you can handle the chaos of an underage game you can handle the chaos of anything. Unfortunately we have come to the worst part of the day when we need to send one of you home. Davy and Rena deliberated for an awfully long time on this decision. They were genuinely blown away by your performances. However, someone has to go. So without further ado, the first person through to the final is Shane. The second person through to the final is... Seamus. And the third and final person through to the gift of the gab for 2022 is... John. Which means, Anna, unfortunately, your journey ends here. You have been a spectacular contestant. Please do listen to the words that the pundits said. You have a future ahead of you. Go for it. Don't be disheartened by this. You are absolutely brilliant. Congratulations to our three finalists, John, Seamus and Shane. You lot have a lot of homework to do because we are going to send you to Croke Park on All-Ireland Final Day. No pressure whatsoever, where you will be going live for full-time analysis and game breakdown on a show that is presented by Michael Lister. Well done. So there you have it. What a journey it's been, and it's certainly not over yet. Make sure you tune in on All-Ireland Final Day to see what our finalists have to say on the final of the Gift of the Gab. It's all very final. I'm sweating already. <laughs> <laughs>